We are halfway through our annual effort to get school supplies to Milwaukee's neediest kids. Volunteers will be back at it again tomorrow, just like they were today, taking pledges to our Class Act phone bank. Donations will be used to give a backpack filled with school supplies to certain Milwaukee public school students. A child shouldn't have to worry about that, but they hear those conversations from mom and dad, and they worry, am I going to have a new backpack? Am I going to have school supplies? Am I going to be prepared for school? This partnership, Class Act and the Salvation Army, it makes it happen. Uh, but we can't do it without your help. Our drive continues tomorrow, and we're also hoping to stuff the bus parked in the Walgreens lot at North and Mayfair Roads tomorrow. Drop off donations there until 7 o'clock in the evening. The sun was back in full force today. Mark is looking ahead in the Weather Center. And it is a sunscreen forecast. How many days in a row you can enjoy that sunshine at Weather Watch 12? And look at this truck smashed through the side of a convenience store. Is it linked to another crime caught on camera? Coal stores may be getting a little smaller. The other ways the company wants to get bigger. I've always liked to dance. My husband and I always like to dance. And her latest dance? Oh, it's making a lot of people smile. New at 10, a violent smash and grab near New Orleans, Louisiana. Surveillance video shows a pickup truck ramming into a storefront several times. Then a group of men takes off with the ATM there. Police are investigating whether it's related to another incident. This one involving a pickup truck slamming into another convenience store nearby. An unusual drug bus policed in Germany seized 5,000 ecstasy tablets in the image of President Donald Trump. Authorities say the pills have an estimated value of $46,000. A 51-year-old man and his 17-year-old son face charges. A warning tonight about a popular app for kids, and it comes from a dad who is using social media to alert parents. Brad Summers says his 7-year-old daughter uses the app Musical.ly. He discovered the app's messaging component after she started getting unusual texts. The messages read, how are you? How old are you? Then the person asked for topless pictures. The little girl let her father know right away. Police are investigating the person on the other end of the messages. Summer says his daughter doesn't have her own phone and is closely monitored. He just wants to get the word out to other parents. Expect to see coal stores get a little smaller. Our partners at BizTimes report the retailer wants to shift more business online. Kohl's will remodel some 300 stores to shrink the retail space and expand the warehouse area to fill online orders. It's also closing some large stores like the one at Southridge Mall and moving them to smaller stores like the one being built on nearby Layton Avenue. A popular after-school spot in Milwaukee is closing its doors. The Boys and Girls Club location near 35th and Hampton will close on Friday. The organization tells 12 News it's because of a disagreement with the landlord. Several kids in the program have already been signed up at one of the other 40 Boys and Girls Club locations across the city. A fresh infusion on Marquette's campus, Sendix Fresh to Go, cut the ribbon today on a new store near 16th and Wells. The grocery store gives access to fresh fruit and veggies in an area of the city considered a food desert because of the lack of healthy eating options. It's the 19th store location for Sendix and the fifth to open this year. Well, the search is on for the next American Idol. We could have had it all rolling in the deep. These are just some of the hopeful singers who lined up in Atlanta for auditions today. It's the fifth stop of Idol's official bus tour. Provo, Utah is next up. American Idol premieres on WISN 12 next May. And that's Brookfield native Nora Collins, the rising country music star, will serve as one of our celebrity judges for Milwaukee Idol. WISN 12 is teaming up with 103.7 KISS FM to give you a chance to win a front-of-the-line pass to the American Idol auditions in Chicago on September 11th. Go to WISN.com and enter for your chance to sing for our celebrity judges on Thursday, August 31st. 60 contestants will be randomly selected. Powerball fever is spreading. The top prize for tomorrow's drawing is $700 million. It's the second largest jackpot in the game's history. The highest ever awarded was $1.6 billion. 
It's been two months since the last Powerball jackpot winner, and the odds of getting all of the right numbers, eh, one in about 292 million. This is the ultimate trust right here. Former Marquette basketball standout and NBA star Dwayne Wade is teaching his teenage son to drive in a Ferrari. <laughs> Wade and his 16-year-old son took the $300,000 car out for a spin in Miami over the weekend. You've got to have confidence in your child to have him drive wow. a three hundred thousand dollar car or a whole whole lot of money so it just doesn't it matter just doesn't make no, any difference no not at all <laughs> all right how are you holding up fresh back from eclipse coverage outstanding by the way fresh back yes it's good to be back mm -hmm. it was an interesting trip because uh traffic was worse than i ever could have uh, imagined we got back this morning at 6 15 in the morning we left carbondale at six o'clock at night normally a six hour trip six hours took you 12. wow there's a lot of time in the car. Photojournalist Bob Palmer and I got to know each You're other really, friends. really well. Uh, before we go, we got to hang here. Oh, come back to me. Not yet. Just want to let you know. Thanks. See, I love when they listen. <laughs> Nobody listens to me, but we I appreciate you guys. We all know not to bother you today because you're <laughs> a little so edgy. Tired. He's a little you probably tired. needs a little sleep. <laughs> a lot of you still have these. You want to know, okay, what should I do with these? Well, don't throw them away. We've got another eclipse in seven years on April 8th of 2024. These will still be good as long as you don't leave them sitting in the sun. So put them somewhere you're going to remember. Just, say, just remember. That'll be the big, the problem is how many of us will remember. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so again, that's uh, 2024. We've got some great pictures to share with you from other folks that were watching the total eclipse down in Festus, Missouri. Dave, appreciate you sharing these. Oh, it was amazing. It was cool. It was still worth it, doggone it, to get all the way down to Carbondale, even though we had that cloud overhead for much of us. Another neat shot here. This is from uh, Bob's daughter shooting that one. Then we take you to Nashville, Tennessee, and Jake with a gorgeous shot here. It was an amazing event. Pretty cool to see, and again, doesn't happen very often. It'll happen again in 2024. A live look outside, 69 degrees in Milwaukee. The dew point is low. It is dry. It'll stay dry all night. It'll stay dry pretty much all week long. Thanks to this, a couple areas of high pressure that kind of come together right over Wisconsin. That's going to keep us generally in the sunshine in this forecast. So a little cool for some of you. As temperatures cool off pretty rapidly at night, down in the lower 50s in some spots, but then lots of sunshine warms us up. We have a taste of fall in the air makes you think we're only 31 days away from fall. Labor Day, just 13 days away. Halloween, 70 days away. Thanksgiving, 93. Oh, yes, don't forget Christmas is only 125 days away, just a little over four months from now. Uh, it's not hard to see there's high pressure out here because there's no clouds and we've got a couple little sprinkles up to the north. We're going to be dry around here not only for tonight, but also for tomorrow and pretty much all week until about Sunday. There may be an isolated sprinkle that tries to pop up, but we've got a lot of dry air near the surface. It's going to be hard for any of this to actually reach the ground. So I think we get a dry day for Wednesday. We get a dry day for Thursday and we continue that trend for a while. Good time to get out there and mow the grass. A little dry in some spots though, so if your lawn has gotten dry and you're not watering it, make sure you're cutting it a little bit higher than you normally do. Temperatures tonight down to the 50s. If you have the air conditioner on, you really don't need it. You can open up those windows. Northwesterly winds dying down to 5 to 10 miles per hour. It will be breezy again tomorrow. Northwesterly winds first shift to the northeast during the day at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Low humidity and high temperatures into the 70s. As I mentioned, it is a great streak of weather. 72, that is cool for this time of year. Those will be the high temperatures on Thursday and on Friday. 74 degrees as we head into Saturday and then on Sunday. A chance for showers, but I don't think it's going to be raining all day for the most part. Uh, the weather for Mexican Fiesta this weekend is looking good. 75 degrees on Monday and 77. Another chance for showers on Tuesday. So enjoy the great stretch of weather to come. Will do. Excited to crack open the windows tonight. Bittersweet news from Netflix about its hit show, Stranger Things. Plus, they're singing happy birthday. One Packer gets the royal treatment from fans on his big day. It's not Aaron Rodgers, though. Why this quarterback says he's bummed his birthday falls in the winter. Next. Tensions run high in Charlottesville, coming up the first city council meeting since a white supremacist rally there turned violent. Big 12 Sports, presented by Menards.
The Brewers began the day two and a half games behind the Cubs. Now Chicago just beat Cincinnati 13 to nine. So the Brewers have to win in San Francisco to keep pace in the division and to remain three and a half games out in the wild card race. But a win in San Francisco is not as easy as it looks on paper. As we saw in last night's two to nothing Giants victory. But Manny Pena is back behind the plate for the Brewers with Jimmy Nelson pitching and Pena continues to play stellar defense. The strike him out, throw him out, double play. Pena snipes out Denard Span. He's very underrated, that Manny Pena is. In the second inning, the Brewers finally got a hit with a runner in scoring position. Keon Broxton with a two out single to score Domingo Santana for their first run of the series. The Giants got that run back in the second, but the Brewers just retook the lead as Gorky's Hernandez just kind of gorkied that one. Dropped the fly ball by Broxton for a three base error and it scored the run. The Brewers lead it two to one in the fourth. Former Badgers linebacker Vince Beagle has still not practiced in pads with the Packers as he recovers from foot surgery. The fourth round pick won't play Saturday at Denver and might open the season on the pup list, which would mean he would have to miss the first six games. However, as 12 Sports Stephanie Sutton reports, there was a reason to celebrate today. Training camp is usually tedious and boring, but it wasn't today for Packer star receiver Randall Cobb, who turned 27. The fans in the stands sang him happy birthday at least four different times. And Aaron Rodgers was happy for his buddy and teammate. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed I'm in, I'm in December. I, I want some, some happy birthdays sang to me, but you know, Randall is, he's becoming that, uh, you know, that lifelong Packer type player who's beloved by the fans. He's had a great career here. Uh, you know, you turn around and this is his seventh season. Um, feels like it's gone by pretty quick, right? Uh, but it's fun, uh, fun to have him here. Obviously, he's a close friend of mine and uh, fans are spectacular. Now, Randall Cobb did not speak to reporters after today's practice because, of course, he had to go home and have some birthday cake. But his teammate Taysom Hill also turns 27 tomorrow, but the Packers backup QB said he's not expecting the same kind of warm reception. That's because he's not a veteran player like Cobb. From Lambeau Field, Stephanie Sutton, WIs and 12 Sports. Thank you, Steph. A blockbuster trade shocked the NBA today as the Cavaliers granted Kyrie Irving's wish. Cleveland traded Irving to the Boston Celtics for Isaiah Thomas, former Marquette star Jay Crowder, Ante Zizek, and a first round draft pick. Zizek. Irving's first game for the Celtics will be October 17th in Cleveland. The following night, the Bucks play the Celtics and Zizek. And two nights later, it's the Bucks home opener against the Cavaliers. All right, see you then sh shortly, Dan. Thank you. In Kenosha County, a train slams into an 18 year old man on the tracks. Yeah, I don't understand why they would be by the train at 12 at night. Coming up, what the train's conductor says the man was doing before the accident. Changing the landscape of food on Milwaukee's near west side. Coming up, why this new grocery store is much needed on Marquette's campus. Breaking news about a story we brought you in the first half hour. Oconomowoc's Common Council has unanimously approved a proposal for a drug and alcohol recovery facility. Some 30 residents will live there for up to six months. The facility would operate in a vacant three-story building in the industrial park on Capitol Drive. The developer says it's designed to meet an underserved need for recovering addicts, helping them transition back to being productive community members. We are fully and totally committed to fighting for our agenda, and we will not stop until the job is done. President Donald Trump takes on his critics tonight at a campaign-style rally in Arizona. His speech ended just minutes ago, and he spent time going after the media and recounted his remarks in the hours and days after the violence in Charlottesville. I hit him with neo-Nazi. I hit him with everything. I, I got the white supremacists, the neo-Nazi. I got them all in there, let's say. Yeah. KKK, we have KKK. I got them all. So they're having a hard time. So what did they say, right? It should have been sooner. He's a racist. It should have been sooner. OK. So it should have been. The president never so mentioned then, his many sides line. He also blasted Arizona Senator John McCain for his no vote on repealing the Affordable Care Act. And Trump hinted he may pardon the controversial former Arizona sheriff, Joe Arpaio, who was convicted of contempt by a federal judge for disobeying a judge's order in an immigration case. Here's what the president said tonight. 
He should have had a jury, but you know what? I'll make a prediction. I think he's going to be just fine, okay? But I won't do it tonight because I don't want to cause any controversy. Is that okay? The president's supporters and protesters gathered outside the convention center in Phoenix and has remained peaceful. <laughs> protesters took over the first city council meeting in Charlottesville, Virginia, since fatal violence erupted earlier this month there. Many held signs reading, blood on your hands, saying the council should have done something earlier about the white supremacist rally that left one woman dead. I had multiple opportunities to intervene, and you did not intervene one time. We told y'all exactly what y'all needed to do, and y'all did nothing. You want to call yourselves the capital of the resistance? No. The resistance was the medics who saved lives. <laughs> the resistance they are the citizens who are identifying the perpetrators of hate crime. Police were eventually called. They arrested three people for disorderly conduct. A train slammed into a teen who tried to record cell phone video on the tracks. Adam Sanchez is in Freighter Hospital tonight in critical condition. The Kenosha County Sheriff's Office says the engineer tried to stop, but it was too late. It happened in Trever just after midnight near 258th Court and Wilmot Road. 12 News' Terry Sater talked with his classmates. 18-year-old Adam Sanchez hit by a freight train while the Kenosha County Sheriff's Department says the teen was recording video on his cell phone. I don't know why you would be on the train tracks video recording the train. Katie Fernandez and Alyssa Cole say they graduated with Sanchez from Wilmot High School this year. Yeah, I don't understand why they would be by the train at 12 at night, but the only thing I can think of is what they're doing is maybe playing chicken, you know, stand on the train, wait till the train gets closed, jump off. I don't know. The train conductor told the sheriff's office he could see the lights from cellular phones on the track ahead. Investigators say reportedly the conductor of the Canadian National Train saw the man and began to slow down. There were four others with Sanchez, but he was the only one to get hit. It's crazy to find out that someone that I knew could be in this situation. Canadian National Railway sent 12 News a statement reading in part, this incident is a tragic reminder of the dangers of trespassing on railroad tracks. I heard there was multiple people there and I don't know why would any of them would watch him do that to himself. It took the train a mile to stop after the impact. In Kenosha County, Terry Sater, WISN 12 News. A relative of Sanchez told us the teen is suffering from internal injuries and has several broken bones. The Wisconsin State Patrol needs your help tracking down this semi. They say it could be involved in the death of a Brookfield man killed in a freak accident on I-94. Investigators believe a piece of the semi's brake system came off and smashed into the windshield of a car driven by Jay Tickler near Johnson Creek in May. Here's another look at the semi. If you know anything about it or the accident, you're asked to call the state patrol. Milwaukee police have identified the man gunned down in a triple shooting on Water Street as 26-year-old Kakuma Kennedy. Someone also shot two other men yesterday morning outside Dukes on the corner of Water and Juno. Police are still looking into what led up to that shooting. A Milwaukee city inspector murdered on the job is honored with a memorial outside where he worked. 64-year-old Greg Ziskiewicz, or Ziggy, was shot and killed by would-be carjackers as he waited to do a job in March. He had worked for the city for 33 years. Today, a rock with a plaque along with a bench was unveiled in his memory, and his daughter spoke at the dedication ceremony. For many of us who loved him, we still cannot make sense of it. I think for the majority of us, we never will. But what we can hope is that this memorial offers a place for people to gather, to talk, to share memories, and to help one another heal from this hurt. The memorial is located outside the office for Department of Neighborhood Services where Ziggy worked. Three men were later charged in connection with his death. A big day on the future of Foxconn in Wisconsin. The governor crisscrossed the state today trying to sell to the public the state's $3 billion incentive package to bring the electronics giant to the area, while at the same time state lawmakers held a public hearing on the matter in Racine County. Foxconn proposed building a $10 billion facility to produce LCD panels in Kenosha or Racine counties. But statewide support does not appear to be there. A weekend poll found residents in four central Wisconsin Senate districts held by Republicans overwhelmingly disapprove of the state's incentive package. 
While speaking in Madison today, Governor Walker believes the support will come around. Actions speak louder than words, and once ground is broken and we're going forward with this and they realize that there's a, a sound plan uh, not only to build family supporting jobs, but there's a sound plan to continue to protect the environment. I think there'll be support just as there have been for other things we've done in the past. Meanwhile, state senators hit the road to let residents of southeastern Wisconsin sound off on the Foxconn deal. Much of the focus at a public hearing in Racine County was on Foxconn's plan for up to 13,000 new jobs. And as Kent Wainscott reports, it included a push for workers from Milwaukee. Wisconsin Valley will be transformational for our 21st century economy. It was another strong pitch from the Walker administration about the $3 billion Foxconn incentive deal, this time to the legislature's Joint Finance Committee, which moved its public hearing here to Sturdivant, near one of the sites that Foxconn is considering. And some of the most pointed questioning came from Milwaukee Senator Lena Taylor, pressing for guarantees that Foxconn jobs would benefit Milwaukee area workers. Saying made in America, made in Wisconsin. Personally, I'd like to be able to say made by some Milwaukeeans and Shorewood and Glendale and Tulsa folks. From day one, when I looked at this opportunity, I thought this was a game changer relative to finding significant opportunities for people that are underemployed in the city of Milwaukee. Taylor also called on the state to ensure that Milwaukee workers could get to those jobs. Tell me exactly what in the bill helps with the lack of transportation for individuals in Milwaukee. Secretary Hogan said there is nothing in the incentive bill about transporting workers, but that the state has had those discussions with Foxconn. They will use their resources to work with us to determine and find ways to transport people to get them to their location. And as to concerns that jobs here in this region near the state line might go to out-of-state workers, the head of economic development for the state said here that he expects more than 90% of the Foxconn jobs will go to Wisconsin residents. In Sturdivant, I'm Kent Wainscott, WISN 12 News. You may recall the state assembly approved the measure last week with bipartisan support. The Joint Finance Committee is expected to vote sometime the week of Labor Day with the Senate voting the following week. Assuming it passes, it will then head to the governor's desk. The deadline is September 30th. We're heading into a nice stretch of weather. Mark, no rain in the immediate forecast. No, no rain and very comfortable temperatures will drop off nicely at night, back down to the 50s, and then we'll warm back up in the 70s each day with some sunshine. A little cooler than average today was a little bit above average. The average high is 78. We did get to 80 in Milwaukee. A little cool up north there. International Falls, just 67 degrees. 84 degrees in Springfield, and you can see uh, not that bad anywhere around the upper Midwest. Let's go into Wednesday now, and we are expecting a beauty. Temperatures at 6 a.m., right around 60 degrees, but then sunshine pretty much wall to wall. We'll see some cumulus clouds develop in the afternoon, but I do believe we stay dry. High temperature of 75 degrees. It will be breezy again. Winds out of the northwest shifting to the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Joyce. Thank you, Mark. Things are really cooking for Milwaukee's near west side after a new Sendix opens and much 